Hi, everyone. Joe for jazbeescasebreaks.com. We're uh, getting into some basketball right here. We filled this up. Thank you, everybody. Jaspie's 15-box high-end basketball mixer. And we're giving away that silver Zion. Do we have that? Oh, there it is. So not graded, but looks like it could be very gradable. All right, Nick, what do you think? Yeah, it could be gradable. Uh, not in love with the edge up there. But what, centering? I'm not poor at centering. Even but raw, they're like seven, eight hundred bucks. Exactly, yeah. I mean, we're splitting hairs at this point. Yeah. It's like you can sell it raw for 700, 800 bucks or then yeah, 10 will get a PSA 9 and, and then we'll still get like it, yeah. thousand over $1,000, yeah. I'd grade it. If you get it, I'd take the time to grade it. All right, so that I'm going to set up right over there. And so you see Nick on the Nick cam. He's going to get this break started just so we can fly through this break. Here are the boxes involved right here, which I'm sure everyone saw. You can probably see all that eventually on the camera if you want to audit that. There's the picture right there. We got a, we got immaculate in this? Immaculate collegiate. Ooh. All right, so it got some nice immaculate collegiates so back there. Big thanks to all these folks right here. A good handful of people picked up their team straight up, which is solid for a pricier break like this. A lot of people gave those Chronicles hanger boxes a shot, and some were successful in getting spots in this break. So no matter how you got in, congrats. All 30 teams are in. Let's roll it. Let's randomize each list one and a five six times for each list. One, two, three, four, five, and six. And be prepared. Hopefully you're, everyone's watching live and not lagging because the trade one is going to be pretty short. Ryan down to Oliver after six. Just because we're kind of up against the clock here. One and a five six times for the teams. After six times, we've got the Pelicans, I've heard of them, down to the Pacers. All right, so congrats to Ryan. He won a spot in Chronic 10 and ended up with the Pelicans here. Derek with the Knicks, Kenny with the Suns, Steven with the Celtics, Jonathan with the Hawks, Chad with the Warriors, Fuad with the Trailblazers, Sean with the Heat, Trevor, Clippers, Jason, uh, Rockets, Ryan Shackleton with the Mavs, Zach Paul with the Bucks, Scott with the Nets. Remember, um, we'll be shipping all of these second-year Luka Doncic cards as well as Giannis base cards as well, just because they've got a little extra boost in value over the last four months, three to five months. Scott, Nets, Brett, Wizards, Kevin, Magic, Matthew, Spurs, Adam, Grizzlies, and Murder Hornets. Nice. Zach with the Raptors, Nathaniel with the Thunder and the Bulls. Kevin with the Pistons, Jonathan with the Cavs, Derek V, you got my Lakers, Jay with the Kings, Kenton with the Sixers, Eric with the Nuggets, Mike Tower with the Jazz, Asa with the T-Wolves, and Oliver with the Pacers. All right, let's get all that on one screen, and let's sort by column B. All right, so we got a lot of trade chatter here. Um... Pistons up for trade. Kings up for Kings for Pistons maybe? Question mark. Clippers for trade. Warriors are up for trade. And if that's a little too small for you, uh, let me know, and I can I can zoom into your name. Raptors, Warriors, perhaps. Just a regular shoebox for this break. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Nothing? No, I, I see deal. J, yeah, Kings for Pistons. All right, and that's Jay and Kenny. I can confirm their existences on here. All right, Detroit for uh, SAC confirmed. Everyone here are my witnesses. 
and TWC trade window closed. So Jay, you now have the Pistons. We'll put a T next to there for trade. Just so, and for those of you watching at home, you can see who draws first blood, if any, in this trade. They could both get monster hits. They can both go hitless. Who knows? That's the fun. That's why we, that's why we play the game, folks. Whoa. Some trash talk from Mike Thomas to Devontae Parker. Uh, Devontae Parker can't guard my... Who's can't guard Mike? <clears throat> Mike Thomas. Michael Thomas. And Devontae Parker going? Oh. Go because, run some numbers up? So the it was, it was one of those stupid pick where it was, which is harder, to guard uh, Michael Thomas or to catch against Stephen Gilmore, Stephon Gilmore, the Patriots cornerback? <laughs> no, that's, and Devontae Parker chose that's A. Why, that's why we need sports back. Guy's getting an Instagram feud. Michael Thomas called him a bust. A lot of, lot of people with free time. And then Devontae Parker said, target me 300 times a game. <laughs> I mean, that shot's fine to his OC, though, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> kind of a ricochet shot. Yeah. Um, what do we want to do first? Hoops? Yeah. All right, so this is some hoops. Some Donner's basketball. All right here, we'll, we'll start with these. All right. Good luck, ladies and gents. Now remember, just in general, LeBron James, Cavs, or Lakers editions, or Heat edition, if we have anything that old, will uh, we'll ship. Those vets will ship. Kobe will ship. Giannis will ship. Luka Doncic, second year Luka Doncic, just will ship. Those are kind of the, the special cards that will ship. But other veteran commons will not. Um, we got Stacy Ogman. Ogman? Ogman. Ogman? Ag Agamemnon? Remember, remember King Agamemnon? There's a Atlanta Hawks that no. goes to Jonathan Lobre. No, I don't. Is that a Pokemon? No, not a Pokemon. An old uh, Dragon Ball? Greek king, I think. He was one of the dudes that... Remember when uh, Orlando Bloom jacked Helen of Troy and then they went across the sea? You know I can speak ancient Greek. Can you? Yeah. And then, really? And I then think uh, it's one of those things that you can't speak or something. Oh, uh, the dead language. Yeah. Like Latin. Yeah. Uh, there's LeBron James Lakers edition, followed with, along with Kobe right there. These are packed randomly. How do I don't know how they? But anyway, Agamemnon cruised cruised out and tried to get. Helen of Troy back. Stacy Ogman's an old player or a new player? I think he's an old player. Old right? player, I think, yeah. yeah. It's Oscar Robertson to 199 for the Bucks. H to the is Shock the NFL world coming up after this. Oh, better, better stay tuned. Shots fired across the NBA universe coming up after this. <laughs> and then it'll be like some sad commercial about COVID. Yeah, it'll then... be like Paul Pierce talking about like Tracy McGrady or something. It's like, oh. King Agamemnon was at UNLV with Larry Johnson. That's got that's got to be quite a team on you know, that that Run and Rebels team there. Donovan Mitchell. That's John Collins, not Trey Young. Who was that white guy a few years ago on UNLV? Everybody hated him. I forget what his name was. Hmm, that sounds familiar. I forget the name too. Nice Luka Doncic rookie. And Zaire Smith, rookie ink for the Sixers. That'll be for Kenton, who won that spot in a trade. And we'll, if I remember, I'll try to do a quick uh, autograph and relic recap at the end. And just know oh, that... Oh, he played for Ole Miss, I'm thinking. For Ole Miss. Why did people hate him? Same color. I don't know. He was just, like, crazy. Yeah, they do have they do have similar team colors. Marshall Henderson. 
That's Anthony Davis. Andre Drummond, Mike Conley. Yeah, Oliver saying Marshall Anderson. Yeah. Stacey Ogman was known as the Plastic Man, says Mike Tower. Why do we not have why do we not have good nicknames anymore, you guys? What happened to the to the good nickname? Uh, this is just regular Donruss basketball, by the way. Game threads. Michael Keep Go Press. Instagram. Yeah, a couple more. Is it Instagram? King James. He's a, that's, a that's I mean that's that's a good one. But I mean there used to be old nicknames like like they just call like Penny. Yeah. There's Anthony Hardaway autograph going to Kevin and the Orlando Magic. That's pretty nice. You know, what about like like Plastic Man? Well, there's no nicknames like that. What about like Slim? The Iceman. George Gervin, the Iceman. Or the Mailman. Mailman. And then Scottie Pippen was like on the Dr. J. finals. The finals game, Scottie Pippen was like, well, the Mailman doesn't deliver on doesn't Sundays. Doesn't deliver on Sundays. And he, he did not. He also did that thing with that 13. Yeah, that no one talks about that in the Kevin the the Carl Malone story. It's under the radar. He must have he must have good PR agents. All right, yeah, chocolate thunder, white chocolate, the glove. I know. And, and Carl Malone kind of bailed on her yeah, too yeah. until his daughter became a WNBA player. Yeah, until then. Yeah. So and, like, and the son NFL player. Yeah. yeah. Maybe maybe that was a thing of that era. Like Larry Bird didn't talk to his daughter. Now he like... goes marijuana. And, uh, <laughs> I'm serious. He's a uh, who? Carl Malone is a marijuana grower. He grows marijuana. Yeah, it's like with their who? Avatar is him on a farm and like. Wow. I don't know. I don't know. Hmm. I think he also owns a teriyaki. <laughs> really? Like a <laughs> Benihana? Been his Wikipedia. No, like a flame broiler or whatever. Oh, like a flame broiler. Like, oh, like a like a chicken bowl place. Yeah, yeah. Huh. <laughs> Like a teriyaki too. All right. The interesting business life of Carl Malone post basketball. There's KG. He also talks about himself in third person. I read on Wikipedia. Oh, he's a Carl Malone guy. He's like yeah, he's, he's like, like, like Carl Malone. Anderson. Yeah, when Carl Malone goes. When Carl Malone when Carl Malone used to play. Yeah, a lot of uh, a lot of stuff in the personal life tab. Never really good. Yeah. When we get our Wikipedia pages, I want that you personal that life empty, section yeah. to be like. One line right there, yeah. you know. Joe Jaspi is married to like Diane Kruger from National Treasure. <laughs> remember, remember her? In that? Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, that's what it want. That's what it should read, and then that's about it. Yeah, I was thinking about moving the operation of Vegas to live next to Nicolas Cage, also a <laughs> National Treasure. Oh man, have him open up National Treasures. <laughs> That'd be sick, right? What's Nick Cage doing? I'm sure he'd do it. Dude, he lives in Vegas. I want to move next to him. Oh, he lives boy. in that fancy. I kind of, I, I, I have a, I have like a Kevin Bacon connection to Whoa, Nicolas really? Cage. I can do it. Okay. I can. I think we can get in touch with him. It was because uh, he was. Remember, he was. Uh, he was with Lisa Marie Presley, Michael Jackson's daughter. No. They were an item for a while back in the day. You know her. No, but I know there are the other parts of her family. So we can probably we can probably, we can probably get no, not that side, the uh, the Presley side. Okay. Um, so yeah, be good. you know, and then we can talk National Treasure while opening National. Yeah, Treasure. Yeah, exactly. And he's also gonna be the Tiger King guy, I guess. Is he really? okay? Yeah. So he can come and promote that. Oh man, and I think Nicholas I Cage. Nicholas Cage. What? What are you? What are you here to promote? He's like, I'm from. I'm here to talk about. I'm here to open National Treasure. Talk about my old movies and promote my new flick, Tiger King, where I play Joe Exotic. That'd be yeah. great. He's got a great car collection too. Yeah, an art collection too. I think. There's Greg Monroe. But yeah, the rent we pay here, we could probably have ten stores in Vegas. So. Are you serious? I guess we could. I guess we could. At that point, I'd like to be open in like a casino. Like, can we be open in like the win? You know those shops? The hotel. Well, like, there's like, there's like Burberry, Louis Vuitton, Hermes, Jaspies. What's the Italian one? Um, Venetian. Yeah, like a store, like next to the Venetian fountain. It'd be like, it'd be like, it'd be like Prada, Gucci, Jaspies. Sports cars and collectibles. 
Oh boy. Although we sell probably products just as much as they like. Yeah, yeah. Like, I'll I'll bet I'll our bet our transcend it twenty thousand dollars is probably more than their yeah. Product. I mean, an Hermes handbag goes for twenty thousand dollars. They probably sell like two of those a month. Yeah, we're next to like you know, like these crazy ones, Gucci. Yeah. It's next to the the Balenciaga Ber- store. Yeah, just. In between the Balenciaga and Margiela store. Or the uh, Automat Paquette watch, whatever it's called. I, I don't I don't know watches. Okay. I don't I know just, watches. I hear it in future songs. I mean, in future talks about it. Yeah, it's expensive. You know, it's about, I mean. All right. Move this chronicle out of the way too. Yeah, Jaspi's uh, Jaspi's Vegas edition. Dan Smith Jr. to one forty nine. Only for a couple years, and then we'll be back. You know. I'm trying to think of a TV show that moved and then came back. I don't know. We can we can do that. Yeah. Let's see what Vegas like. I don't know. We can we can we can just use Vegas as a tax haven. There's no like state income tax. And okay. My yeah. set up set up residence there. I can still we live out here. Live in Vegas. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone does that. Rich people do that all the time. Harry Giles, yeah. Sacramento Kings. You can hire a tax haven. That's totally. Yeah. Weird. Yeah. We can totally do that. We know some guys. You know some guys. Trade him some boxes. Give us some tax. Here. Yeah. Fifty-eight out of ninety-nine. Julius Randall. Uh, the Amaka Collegiate, I think, goes to uh, the checklist. I think there is a checklist for that. We'll look that up before we start the that box. And the box had twenty sixteen on it, so I don't know if it's. 15, 16, or 16, 17. I'm guessing 16, 17. So I just put 2016 on it. All right. Because that's what the box says. I think it's 2016, 17, though. Bruno Fernando. Hawks. That'll be for Jonathan L. Fernando. Remember that? Fernando, the uh, Lady Gaga song? Yeah. It's a banger. It is. That was a good song. It was a good song. Adele lose like 100 pounds. Did she really? Good for her. JJ, JJ Reddick, tonight's healthy. Gotta get on Adele. Train, train. I know. <laughs> Adele, I, I, I need, need to lose like 10, 15 pounds. And, uh, <laughs> then you'd have time to work out too. Yeah, people were mad though. No. Why, why are they mad? Because she, she got healthy? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's like she was like an icon for like, you know. Yeah, but be like, now she's know, an icon for being healthy. You know Lizzo? Yeah. Her, it, you know? Would she be the same? Probably. Yeah, not. absolutely. I think, I don't know. Aren't our voices better? Is Lizzo's voice better than Adele's? Is that what you're saying? I haven't heard Adele sing in a while. But like Oprah's, or opera singers are always kind of big, right? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know why that, yeah, I don't know why that stereotype exists, but it's yeah. it's true though. Like, it's physics. <laughs> physics? <laughs> They can they can they can expel air with much more force, hence more better singing voices. Yeah, I like Lizzo, but I think I think Adele has uh, has the better voice. Yeah, Adele's great. Lizzo's great. I love you know. Karen I think I think the weight thing only matters with like actors. Like sometimes Zach Galifianakis has said that. He, or Jonah Hill has said this too. Yeah, when you Sometimes see, you're like, you know, they want you to be fat, but then if you lose weight, they're like, oh, you're not, you're not big enough for this role, and you're in this like weird effed up middle ground where you're just like, like a normal Matt, weight. It's like Mac on so, Sunny where he gained hundred. Yeah, Mac then, on Sunny. And then the that, next season he was like ripped. So I was like, how the heck did he do that? They said that. Well, they said that it was the the, the rate at which he gained and lost really weight unhealthy. was was super dangerous, and they had like doctors like. Monitor him for that, and That's so funny. you know, and then and then uh, who's his wife Olson? Yeah. She was she was just like, it was gross. He was snoring a lot. I was really nervous for him. 
because Caitlin Olsen was was freaking out because she was like, I don't know yeah. if that's a good idea. Yeah. She was on board with it for the comedy, but. Yeah, I think Christian Bale done the same thing when he played um, Dick Cheney. He also got really big for Batman and then really small for that one movie he did before boxer Batman. Not the boxer. boxer. Yeah, some, some Guys, what was, what was that Christian Bale movie he did before and he was super skinny and then he had to regain a ton of weight to be Batman? Why? Pray to me. Batman. Brain. Before the mask. <laughs> before Nobody the cared. mask. No one cares before the mask. Brain. American Psycho? I don't know, the machinist. You talking about? Machinist. Are you talking uh, about Batman Begins or Dark Knight? I think Batman Begins. Machinist. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that, that's, what, that's what Josh, Zach, Mac. Mac, and Blackout are saying. Yeah, I think he got really skinny for that. Yeah, like he heroin skinny. skinny for that. And then had to get like Batman big. Which was poco peligroso, I think. A little dangerous. I don't know what the brain had to do. He just put on a mask. I don't know enough Bane lines to do it. I gotta work on that. <laughs> Things to work on. For no good reason. Memorize, the best sequel of all memorize Bane lines. It's pretty good. Is it considered a sequel? Dark Knight Rises is pretty good. The fight. I haven't seen the fighter. Fighter. No, not been. Dark Knight Rises. Just Dark Knight. Dark Knight. The Dark, second wait, one, right? Dark Knight Rises is with. Bane. There was Batman Begins. And then there was Dark, Dark Knight, Knight Rise, then, Dark Knight, which is with uh, Joker. Bane, but with, uh, and then Dark Knight. Knight Rises would be. Which one is? Which one is better, Dark Knight or Dark Knight Rises? The Joker one, Dark Knight. Oh, yeah. The one with the Joker, I think, is really. Yeah, I good. think the Bane one is pretty good. So you got Anne Hathaway. You got Anne Hathaway thrown in there. It's pretty yeah, cool. Anne Hathaway was. Did she did a good good Catwoman. But yeah, the Dark Knight though, I you could you could almost say that's not even an action movie anymore. That's like just a good, good piece of cinema that happens to have action in a cartoon Bane character. Goes, I am the League of Shadows, and I'm here I to am the kill Destiny. I am the League of Shadows. I am Burn. I am Burn. There's Devin Booker. Red. Is this Timo? There's a mesquite cricket in here. Is this Timo? Yeah, I think this is the T-Mall, folks. This is the Red Wave. Yeah, that's T-Mall. Courtside Red Wave. Nice. By Jason's desk, yeah. Oh, that Cricket's going to eat all of us. It's so loud. Yeah, stop being so loud, Cricket. Like, we hear you. Cricket really wants to be paid attention to. It's like, we get it, Cricket. There's Brandon Clark, Red Wave. Big fan of Tom Hardy. Ever everyone see Legend? That the the one where he plays the two uh, Ronnie Cray twins. But he plays both parts. Quite good. Jonathan L with the Hawks. Red Wave Trey Young. John Wall Silver. We got Red Wave, Hassan Whiteside, Trailblazers, Fuad with that one. Yeah, Tom Hardy's pretty great, Chris Levin. I agree. He's great at, as Bane. Bane? I can't do it. I got to work on that Bane voice. The Bane voice gets, you, you can easily accidentally slip into, uh, into Sean Connery voice accidentally when you're doing Bane voice. That's the trouble. There's Zion Williamson. There's also the movie where he played a uh, the guy that was allegedly a psychopath who's in jail. Another good one. I think he's also in Tinker Tailor Soldier Spy. If you're into those those old '60s era crime movies, which is pretty good. Good ensemble cast there, which is back on Netflix too. Blaster box. This must be some sort of blaster box. Yeah, it is. You can see the orange cracked ice in there. This must be choice back here. So let's save that. Let's grab this. Let's grab some Revo. 
And I think we're just in down to our sort of high end stuff right over here. So good luck. All right, so pink hyper. What year is this? 1920. PJ Washington, pink hyper. Eddie C, what's going on? Yes, creepy, creepy white van. Still mystery van. Is still a thing here. Is mystery van out there? <laughs> I can hear Nick in the background. He's like, probably. You gotta watch out for that. I'm sure. I'll bet there. It's. I'll bet it's one of those things where it's like the scary house in your neighborhood, which turns out to not be a scary house. It's just a friendly old lady that lives there. But you know. She, her husband passed away and she doesn't have time to do the lawn. It's probably one of those situations. <laughs> the, the white van is probably like just like, it looks like they're they're working on electricity or any of the day or something like that. They're like freelance electricians and turned out to be really nice. And we're like, oh man, boy, we thought you guys were scary. And we're like, oh man, what a misunderstanding. Turns out we're, we're friendly neighbors after all. Thanks for thanks for looking out. All right, prism. True, that house can't follow us. Right, we can avoid the house. The van can't avoid the van. Kobe. I like how it's card number eight. Grant Williams. Gosh, I hope not, Zach. If if there, if, if if we just don't go live one day without any warning on Twitter or Instagram or anything like that, you can just assume I would just call Hermosa Beach Police and say it was the mystery white van that parks outside of Jaspie's sports cards and collectibles. So I hope I hope justice will be done. Let justice be done, though the heavens may fall. RJ Barrett for the Knicks, Derek Leo. Speaking of Narcos, do you have to watch the original to know about Narcos Mexico? No, you don't. There are there is a character that overlaps, but but it it almost there are a couple of characters that overlap. But no, you don't have to. But it's very, it's very interesting, and I think it just kind of highlights the continuing struggle with this so-called war on drugs. is pretty difficult to battle. We got a John Morant right here on top. That's nice. Chinese New Year revolution. But Narcos is quite good. If you're interested in in uh, South American politics and the impact of the drug trade on this hemisphere, I think people will find Narcos y Narcos Mexico very interesante. And if you want to try to brush up on your Espanol, you can watch without subtitles and see if you could follow <laughs> follow it. Which you can't, and then you just have to turn it on and half listen and half watch the subtitles. Which is better? I think the New Year Mofondu. I, I think the original two or three seasons of Narcos based in Colombia is better. I think there's a little more narrative. And it just doesn't follow, um, just doesn't follow the Pablo Escobar cartel. But it also fo follows like the, the Cali cart. I think he was Medellin. Pablo Escobar, and then it also follows tracks the the big wigs and the Cali cartel as well. So there's a bit more compelling storylines. The the uh, 
the Narcos Mexico storyline follows um, Felix Miguel Gallardo, I think. Miguel Angel Felix Gallardo, so Miguel Fe Felix. Um, which just tracks him, and it's really just, there's Brooke Lopez, New Year, which tracks him mostly over the two seasons, but it's a little frustrating because it's just like, it's very formulaic. It's like, he has a vision about the cartel, and then he runs into problems. He has a vision about the cartels. Nobody gets it. And everybody's infighting because, you know, the golf cartel can't, you know, can't play nicely with the Sinaloa cartel, can't play nicely with the Tijuana cartel and the Juarez cartel, and everybody fights, and nobody can get S done. And Miguel Angel Felix is frustrated that he can't build this, like, monopoly. And then he gets caught. So. But he, I mean, whoa, two out of eight New Year. Marcus all there's the gold. All right. Nice. Marc Gasol, Raptors, two out of eight. Zach Paul won that spot in Chronicles 9. I think it's the first one I've seen in person out of this Chinese New Year version. There's LeBron James New Year, which is pretty nice as well. But, yeah, I mean, I, th I think... Miguel Felix is still still in jail at the moment. And uh, his idea was, hey, if if I'm the if I'm the godfather, if you will, um, if I'm the El Padrino, then there wouldn't be all these all this violence and problems. And when, after he was caught, basically, there was a huge uptick in violence. There was a point where when, where like, they just traveled to Tijuana it was just. I mean, I think you can still kind of go now, but, but there there was a point in time where they were telling UC San Diego students just don't even go down there anymore because of all the all the infighting that was happening. So. In a way, I mean, we're talking about criminals here, you know, bad people, but in a way he was right. If there was just one person running everything, then there would be, there'd be less problems, I, I suppose. And that was his sort of so-called, his criminal vision, right? But it didn't. Now everybody's fighting and then that's a big issue and... Yeah, Clear and Present Danger is a good is a good cartel movie too. That's a good one. I mean, you watch all these movies. There's there's just like so many, so many layers of, of how we screwed up policy as the as Americans down in there. The level of corruption that's there, you know, all that sort of stuff. It's really fascinating. From a uh, from a historical perspective it's a living history it's still happening to 149 lonnie walker relic narcos great show though if you want to get a primer on on that nice mo bamba relic and autograph 25 ink and leather piece of the piece of the basketball and his autograph and the the absolute encased card is a encased elio kobu autograph And as for Ozarks, McCarthy, I've I've not gotten into that yet. How many seasons is Ozark on? To one forty nine. I like television shows that have very short seasons. I want more like, I feel like dramas, mini like Korea and Japan, Korea, Japan. I think Mexico. They do a lot of these mini series. There's Reggie Jackson. So like you just. Watch a handful of seasons, and then it's done. And then you don't have to... But, like, Lost is, like, a million seasons. 
You know, Friends is a million seasons. Reggie Jackson goes to the Pistons. That's Jay. He draws first blood in the trade. And there's a nice Giannis encased card from from uh, Absolute. If Ozarks is short, I can do it. I like I like the UK office, right? There's like two seasons in a Christmas special. Right? And I like uh I like uh I don't know. Extras with Ricky Gervais. We're gonna save those choice boxes for last. All right. Um Twenty sixteen Immaculate Collegiate. I'm also worried that if I start watching Ozarks and I'll start thinking, man, could we make extra money uh, laundering money here at Jaspies? Sopranos, Eddie. I've never seen an episode of Sopranos, and I don't even want to start it because it's just too many seasons. So, principled. Principle. Love the mob. Love the mafia genre, right? Love the, love the South American Mexico cartel genre. I love Goodfellas, The Irishman, Casino, all that sort of stuff. Love it. So there you go. Uh, there's the checklist for sixteen, seventeen, immaculate collegiate basketball. So Paul George, card number thirty-six. Right, is Clippers. So this is this is the correct one, and that's the twenty-five, and that will be for Trevor. But Eddie, I like the Wire. That's only like four or five seasons. Wire's real easy. Out of twenty-five, there's Bryce Johnson, who I think is also a Clipper, right? He is. I should actually write these down. Make it easy for the shipping team. LAC, LA Clippers. And we've got a randomizer here. We've got Willie Cauley-Stein, Frank Kaminsky, Jaleel Okafor, and D'Angelo Russell. So Willie Colley sign must have been Kings back then. Warriors back then. Frank Kaminsky Hornets. Suns back then. According to this checklist here. Card nine, right? Yeah, card nine. Okafor. Um, Pelicans. And and D'Angelo Russell Warriors. Correct. Yeah, it sounds like sounds like their current teams. We're going by that checklist. When did they update that checklist? They updated it November 22nd, 2019. So yeah, it's only when we don't have checklists do we go by, I don't know, they have the right to re update that checklist. We go by group rate checklist. It's a little bit easier for this era of stuff. 22 out of 25, Kevin Durant, which I assume would be Nets at this point. Yeah, Brooklyn Nets. We got Tyler Eulis. Is he still Suns? Kings for the Tyler Eulis. That will be for Kevin Benedict. We've got Ben Bentel, 9 out of 25. I don't remember Ben Bentel. He's a Maverick at the moment. The Providence forward. We got Scal Labissiere, three color jersey and autograph. And 
and he is currently a Portland Trailblazer. So that means that Brandon Ingram, which is a nice looking Brandon Ingram, must be for the Pelicans, right? 88 out of 99. Nice Brandon Ring Ingram, not Ringram, Ingram, <laughs> two color jersey and autograph. 88 out of 99. He is indeed a Pell. So that will be for Ryan C. All right, there you go, Ryan. Pretty nice. Kind of wish the Lakers held on to Brandon Ingram. All right, last two boxes here is a Donruss choice and then Donruss optic choice, looks like. There's Steph Curry. These are all pretty nice cards here. To 35, Warriors, Kawhi Leonard. 80 out of 99, you can see in the corner there. Avery Bradley, Lakers edition. Going to Derek. And that's a Hachimura, Rookie Dominators autograph, 10 out of 10. Wow. That is nice. Wizards, Brett Foy with the Wizards. Bought that spot straight up. Got randomized. The Wizards ends up with a 10 out of 10. Hotch Imura autograph. Jalen McDaniels will go to the Hornets. That'll be for Adam Kupperman. Stuff is nice. Nick Claxton, rated rookie. Kobe White, Keldon Johnson, Terrence Mann, Dylan Windler. All of these are pretty sharp. And out of choice, you never know. Any one of these rookies can, can blow up and all of a sudden be great. Kobe White's are already pretty great. He's got a nice ceiling. But you never know. Like, you know, I've heard people people talk talk positively about Nick Claxton being like, hey, who knows? All right. Last box here, Clay Thompson. Landry Shamit. Rated rookie. Sixers. That's going to go to Kenton. Nice Michael Porter Jr. rookie. That's pretty strong. That's going to go to the Nuggets. Eric J. With the Denver Nuggets. All he has to do is stay healthy. and He, he can be pretty amazing. Vincent Edwards is your signature series autograph for the Rockets. Jason with that one. Jason O. Alfred Payton, Pelicans, 69, nice, out of 88. And last but not least is Devin Booker, great Devin Booker for Kenny and the Suns. That's one out of 88. Beautiful. Nice finish, ladies and gentlemen. All right, now before I do a quick recap, we got to give this away and randomize that as well. So... Let's go back to random.org. All right. So let's go back here. Let's grab everyone's name from John down to Brett. And everyone has a shot at that Zion Silver, ungraded. And then let's do the quad relic right here. Golden State Warriors, Phoenix... New Orleans, Golden State Warriors. Let's roll it and randomize each list. Three and a two, five times for each list. One, two, three, four, and fifth and final time. After five, Golden State had two of the four. Golden State had the odds. Golden State gets the card. GSW Golden State Warriors. There you go. We'll get the 7 out of 99 quad relic. Here's the big moment right here. The Zion Silver. Let's flip back here. Three and a two. Five times. Name on top after five. Good luck. One, two, three, four, and fifth and final time. After five times. Thanks, everyone, for getting in. Congrats and good luck. Good luck first. And congrats to, boom, Kenny.
Kenny J, KJ, congrats to you, man. Get it graded. I mean, raw, it's still gonna go for a lot, but get it, get it graded. You never know. Even a, even a, even a nine would be pretty awesome. So there you have it. And there you go, folks. Thanks everyone for watching. Joe for jazbeescasebreaks.com. We'll see you next time for the next one. Bye-bye. Oh, no, not bye-bye. I almost forgot. Here we go. Quick little, uh, quick little recap here. It's about a 45 minute break. I got to do a recap on anything that's close to an hour, 45 minutes and over. So that's all the Chinese New Year parallels, which was great. That there was a Marcus Saul, that was gold, which was pretty cool too. LeBron, there's a regular Zion. That's a that's one for the Pelicans. So pretty nice break overall. The great thing about hoops these days is that the card's sliding all over the place. The great thing about hoops these days is that. Um, Wait, I lost all my screens here. There we go. Is that even non-relic, non nice Anthony Hardaway too, non-relic, non-auto cards, just those basic rookie cards and parallels have had so much great value. Pretty amazing stuff. Thanks for watching, everybody. Congrats again to Kenny on that Silver Zion. Thanks, everyone, for getting in. We'll have more tomorrow. JaspiesCaseBreaks.com. Bye-bye.